Roush Games! Hello, 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 and welcome back to Roush Games here on YouTube. More importantly, welcome back to my Universe Mode and SmackDown Friday night. Week number three in the month of May, 2K14. That's 2K14, not 2014, not real life, yo. And we're back once again in the United Center, Chicago, Illinois, the UC, the Madhouse on Madison. 19,460 WWE fans here for SmackDown. You've seen the card by now on Reddit, no doubt. You know we've got Six taking on Dusty Rhodes to lead things off. You know we've got Virgil taking on Scott Steiner, another member of the NWO. That'll be right up after this. You know we've got a rematch from last week. Cody Rhodes and Christian taking each other on. Christian looking for another nice match there. We're going to have another rematch because Natalia, the number one contender for the Divas Championship, does not think that her countout loss to Caitlyn was a fair point because AJ Lee interrupted the match, and Natalia feels that AJ was playing off of the fact that she knew that she would go after AJ, causing Natalia to lose the match and lose momentum, even though she's already got a match scheduled for next Sunday night at Over the Limit for the Divas Championship. They have a rematch. AJ Lee should be backstage if all goes according to plan. And then our main event this evening, we're going to have Razor Ramon taking on Titus O'Neil of the primetime players. Razor Ramon all over Ricky the Dragon Steamboat this month so far, just redefining what pain is for him. And apparently Steamboat can't take it. We're gonna have we had to fill his spot this week with Titus O'Neil, who's otherwise doing nothing because Darren Young is slowly becoming the laughing stock of the WWE combined roster. That is what we have tonight, and we are into this opening match. Dusty Rhodes taking on six. Dusty Rhodes has had just kind of a thing with the NWO since he got here in our universe mode when he arrived and formed the tag team with his son Cody. Uh, last week, he ended up losing a triple threat match to Virgil. It was uh, Virgil, Dusty Rhodes, and Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. This week, he's taking on six in the opening match on SmackDown as Virgil and Scott Steiner will be replaying that match. Huge power slam from Dusty to six, but six does get up as Virgil and Big Papa Pump will be replaying that match by themselves immediately after this to see who would win in just a battle of the two of them. There's six with a nice block and then a punch to the top of the head of Dusty. There's a nice float over neck breaker from six. X-Pac, six pack, Sean Waltman, whatever you want to call him. Huge backflip from the top turnbuckle. Goes six, one. Oh, just a one count though. Dusty is still very much in this, but now six. Big time face buster. And one time in his life, he called that move the X-Factor. And now he's going to lift Dusty Rhodes up and he spins him around. He's got one arm locked behind and he's got the submission applied here. And Dusty's got no way to get to the ropes. This is a quite a bit of torque being pressed into his body by Six. The very agile Six. A man who has twice torn his anus open. Da -da -da! Now you know. And there is Six. Side headlock. Float over. Neck breaker. Dusty goes down, and now Six once again going to go up top. Turns around, another big backflip, but this time Dusty gets the knees up. He's seen his son with the moonsault off the top of the cage before. He knows how to defend against something like that. But Six now blocking a punch from the American Dream. Dusty Rhodes, and he's got him set up. Looks like a suplex. Unbelievable strength from Six to Dusty Rhodes. Dusty is a big man, and Six is not. I can't believe he gets him up. And this is just arm drag city. Dusty Rhodes keeps on running at six, and six is happy to throw him down. There's a snap there from Dusty into an elbow drop right to the chest of six. And he's got punches to the forehead of the much more agile competitor in the ring. And now Dusty looking to take control. He picks him up here. And a big flying elbow to the top of the head. The bionic elbow from Dusty Rhodes. He's going to drag six across toward the center of the ring. Going for a pin here. One. Oh, one count, six does indeed kick out after that pin, though. But there's Dusty, an elbow, a second elbow, another elbow, a cabbage patch in the air, a series of replays, and a fourth elbow to the top of the head, and six is laid out in the ring. One, two, oh, two count, six does kick out. Dusty, though, gets him right up into a side headlock, snapmare, 
into a reverse chin lock. And Six now has nowhere to go. He's not got no ropes to get to. And he has to tap out. Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, comes back and takes out Six. Great match from the American Dream. We weren't sure how he was going to hold up in WWE, but he has been great. His son, on the other hand, has a little work to do, and we're going to see if he can do that later. But before we get to that, we are going to come right back with Virgil, Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner. They're going to go one-on-one -on -one and see who truly is the best between the two of them. They're both kind of parts of Trio's teams that will be taking part in the King of Trios next month. You've got the Million Dollar Corporation and you've got the NWO. They both look to factor pretty prominently in the outgoing something. In the outcome, that's what I wanted to say. The outcome of that tournament. We're going to come right back for that match. But right now, Dusty Rhodes here in Chicago, Illinois gets a big win to open up SmackDown on this Friday night in May. We're heading into summer. Things are heating up. Things are looking great. We're going to be right back. And here we are back for our second match of the evening. This, if this looks familiar, don't adjust your computer monitor. We saw pretty much this match last week on SmackDown with the addition of Dusty Rhodes. It was a triple threat match between all three that Virgil did win. You got to think Ted DiBiase was incredibly happy, but <laughs> Scott Steiner and his NWO definitely not happy. They're trying to work their way out of the bottom of the card here. We thought the NWO would be bringing a lot more pressure to the rest of the WWE roster, but it looks like the Million Dollar Corporation has just taken over on SmackDown, not leaving much room for irrelevance anywhere else. And Scott Steiner is going to take that out on the NWO's newest member here today, the guy that won the triple threat match last week, Virgil. Speaking of Virgil, let's talk about him. He came back to the WWE right after Extreme Rules at the beginning of this month. Ted DiBiase reportedly found him sleeping on a New York City subway car and just convinced him to come back part of the old team. And now it's DiBiase, Virgil, Andre the Giant, and King Kong Bundy. I mean, you want to talk about an unstoppable force. You've got the presumed number one contenders to the tag team championships. You've got the world heavyweight championship. You've got the guy that put Alberto Del Rio down in NXT. And you've got Scott Steiner about to end this match really early. Knee in the back, chin lock applied. But he does have to let go as the ref counts there. Virgil just getting it taken to him here. And now Steiner with a huge gorilla press over his head, just throwing Virgil down to the mat. Steiner, big papa pump in complete control. Looks like a different man than he did during that triple threat match last week. Virgil, not going to be so lucky here. He's looking to kick out, does it. Just almost a two count there. And now Virgil's got to get some offense going. Collar and elbow tie up in the center of the ring. Steiner comes out on top into a side headlock. He's got Virgil set for a suplex here. Lifts him up down on his back. Big time vertical suplex. Nice old school maneuver from Big Papa Pump. Scott Steiner rolls him over onto his stomach. And he's got another chin lock applied here. They're near the ropes, but the ref's not going to give it to Virgil. And Virgil actually has to tap out. I mean, for all intents and purposes, that is a squash match for the ages. Big Papa Pump of the NWO. Scott Steiner proves that he and his friends are not to be messed with and that they are a force to be reckoned with. He takes down a member of the Million Dollar Corporation here in our second match, and there are stirs of dissension among the lower ranks here on SmackDown. DiBiase may have to start looking over his shoulder doing something. You'll notice that no one else from the corporation is on this evening's card. I think the guys here on SmackDown are starting to see that they're going to get complacent in their, their leadership of the blue brand. We may start to see a change in guard here. Either way, Big Papa Pump... Huge win. We're going to come back Christian and Cody Rhodes here in Chicago, guys. We'll see you in a few. And we are back. This is our third match from the United Center in Chicago, Illinois, this third week in May, 2K14 on SmackDown. This is a rematch from last week's episode of the Blue Brand. Cody Rhodes and Christian, two fan favorites here. They duped it out last week, and Christian came out with a nice impressive win over Cody Rhodes. Rhodes looking to get back on track now. His dad trying to give him some advice backstage. His dad's been on a pretty good kick since he came back into WWE earlier, or about a few weeks back, I should say. And Cody has not had the same luck. He wants to be able to show his dad that he can lean on him for support in the King of Trios tournament next month. But he needs to get some wins under his belt if he's going to put that show of faith across. We do know that Edge Christian and Chris Jericho are coming together to, to take part as... Team Canada. That one's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And now Rhodes lifting Christian up on the top turnbuckle. Has him set up 
Hit a package on his shoulder. There's the backdrop. Great move from Cody Rhodes. And now Rhodes himself is going to go up top. And there's a moonsault from the top rope. Great maneuver from Cody Rhodes. Going for the pin early, but not even a one count. And Christian comes back to his senses. Rhodes up with punches. Misses the drop kick. Christian boots him down, though. Edge and Christian are technically still a legally operating tag team in this universe mode. We just haven't seen too much of them. They've both been more focused on their singles career. Edge spent last month overcoming Kofi Kingston. He actually tried to convince Kofi Kingston to become a tag with him, with Caitlyn as their manager, and Kofi wanted no part of it. Kofi was actually driven to the dark side of the WWE by the relationship of Edge and Caitlyn. It was so ugly and cute that he went to the dark side. It poisoned his mind. He lost his match against edge at extreme rules and he ended up getting kicked down to nxt where we have yet to see him there is cody rolling out of the ring and now christian's gonna follow we're on the outside there's a big flapjack to the floor of the arena from christian to cody rhodes face first into the floor goes cody but he blocks a punch from christian getting back to his senses right away twisting the arm around and he flips him over in the shoulder up with two knees down into the arm here on the outside of the arena the ref is indeed counting on the inside cody working from behind on christian Christian, nice little hip toss there to get out of it. Going to run past him, but a big power slam from Cody Rhodes to Christian. And now Cody's going to go back up into the ring. Cody is fired up, and now Christian gets his way back up to Cody with a kick to the gut. Has him in a side headlock. And now he's got him up over his shoulders and down for the big time Alabama slam. And now Cody getting Christian up groggy to his feet. And there is the big finisher from Cody. He's going to go right for the pin on Christian. One, two, three. We have had short matches tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Cody gets the win there over Christian. Big time win for him. He needed that one. All kinds of big offense there. I can't believe that as an announcer I have to say this right now. But I've grown awkward over the past few seconds because I am brain farting like, whoa, on the name of Cody Rhodes' finisher, which I've seen and spoken about hundreds of times in the past. Please blow the comments up and remind me what it is. This is dumb. I'm going to remember as soon as this match goes off. It's just one of those uh, tip of the tongue things. But that doesn't matter. You've got a stupid announcer and you know it. What you didn't know is that Cody Rhodes could get a win over Christian. Their score is 1-1 one and one now over the past two weeks. And Cody's happy. He just proved to his dad that he could definitely do it. But now he's eyeing up Christian after the match. Nothing big here. All right, just leaning on the ropes and celebrating. We're going to be right back with some Divas action, guys. Another rematch from last week. This is like the worst booked SmackDown ever. Natalia taking on Caitlyn in a few minutes. Oh, and AJ Lee attacking Natalia from behind. AJ Lee, your Divas champion, not wasting any time on Natalia this week. We're not even going to start the matchup. And Natalia now, big time Hangman's neckbreaker to AJ Lee. And now she's going to go after Caitlyn. We remember last week, for, for some reason, AJ is incredibly hurt right now, trying to get away from everything. I don't know what's going on with her. Stumbling down the ramp, trying to get away. But we remember last week, AJ interfered in the match, and oh, Natalia's just not going to let her leave this time. And cost Natalia the match, because Natalia decided to stay on the ramp and duke it out with her. AJ now withering away again. Caitlyn has Natalia up in the ring. And if she goes after her, that looks like this match is going to start. But no, Natalia's shoulder tackles her off the ring but there's a big back body drop from Caitlyn to Natalia Natalia has gone completely insane she's trying to get up the ramp to take out AJ Lee Caitlyn is going to fight her all the way up and now stomping on her shoulder on the entrance ramp I have never seen a Divas match like this and now there's a back body drop from Natalia to Caitlyn and Natalia going all the way up top AJ Lee has indeed gone backstage Natalia is furious she can't believe that she missed her opportunity at the champion again as she interfered last week and cost her the match. But this match is not underway, so they can fight up here all they want. And there's a big sidewalk slam from Natalia to Caitlyn. Caitlyn, we know, spent last month falling in love with Edge, trying to get involved in the Divas picture, but could not get a good enough match. The one time she had a chance at a number one contenders match, she lost to... Nat no, oh my God. Natalia with another big back body drop up top. They're right on top of the stage, and there's a twisting neck breaker from Caitlyn to Natalia. And now Caitlyn lifts Natalia up. They are not built for this. Throws her to the side, and there's a bulldog on the 
freaking entrance ramp from Natalia to Caitlyn. Natalia is just raged now. There's a back body drop again. Caitlyn's going to break herself if she keeps running at Natalia like this, twisting the arm around. Caitlyn, step up and Ziguri to the back of the head. Unbelievable from these two. I have literally never seen anything like this between two women in the WWE. This is insane. There's a back elbow from Caitlyn to Natalia. And there's a big running punch into a kick. But now a punch to the thigh from Natalia. And she's got Caitlyn up. Snap suplex heading back down the entrance ramp. Maybe gravity will bring them back to the ring at some point and we can make this match happen. But there's Natalia with the discus clothesline sending Caitlyn down, down, down. And now Natalia trying to get her up to her feet here. She's egging her on, mocking her ceaselessly. And Caitlyn with a back elbow to the face as Natalia went in on the attack. And there's a shoulder tackle. And Natalia runs down the rolls down the entrance ramp, I should say. And now Caitlyn going to throw her down the ramp the rest of the way. Natalia ends up rolling up into the ring. She's laying out on the apron, incredibly vulnerable. But Caitlyn is in pain, definitely not getting down there fast enough. And there is the match underway. The ref rings the bell. Natalia there with a twisting back suplex to Caitlyn. And she is still just a ball of anger, having lost her chance at AJ Lee again. There's a back body drop from Caitlyn. All Natalia wants to do in this world is break AJ Lee and take the title from her at this point. Natalia was such a good person this time last month. And ever since Vince McMahon gave them their title match next week at Over the Limit, Natalia has come unhinged. She has gone insane. She is meeting AJ Lee on that same mental wavelength that she's inhabited by herself in this Divas division for a few years now. Caitlyn now, big time rib breaker to Natalia over one knee, but Natalia getting up with a punch to the gut, works around behind Caitlyn into a snapmare though, sends her down. And now with a knee to the back goes Caitlyn. Natalia pushes off and runs at her, but Caitlyn into a nice leverage pin here. Natalia kicks out. Caitlyn kind of on a roll, though, after taking a beating up on the ramp. Natalia working the arm around, has her up, and that's going to be another sidewalk slam. That back of Caitlyn has to be in some serious pain. Suplexes, sidewalk slams, everything up on the ramp, not good. There's a big back suplex from Natalia to Caitlyn, and now Natalia picks her up by her hair and backs off, and once again, a spinning discus clothesline from Natalia to Caitlyn, and now Natalia... Heading down to her legs. She's going to have it locked in. This is going to be the sharpshooter from Natalia to Caitlyn. Caitlyn's got to get out. She does get to the rope. But now Natalia's going to roll her over for the pin. One, two. Oh, Caitlyn kicks out right at two. The match goes on. And now a series of punches. But Caitlyn blocks out of that last chop into a side headlock. Into a Russian leg sweep from Caitlyn. Sending Natalia, the number one contender, down. And now Caitlyn getting Natalia up to her feet. She's egging her on. She's backing off. That's usually a spear, but instead we see a shoulder tackle. And Caitlyn, all kinds of fired up here. Natalia is face down and hurting. And wait, with a full Nelson. She's got the submission applied, does Caitlyn. Natalia cannot get to the rope. She's in an immobile position here, but she does indeed kick her way out of it. Her arms are hurting after that incredible attack, though. She blocks a punch with one, runs at Caitlyn. Has her behind. There's a reverse fisherman suplex. One, two, three, two. <laughs> two count. Very close, though. It looked like we were at the end of the match there. Natalia with a suplex now. The match goes on. These divas, I swear, in this universe mode, they know how to entertain me. I don't know if you guys like it as much as I do, but these matches always end up being so much fun to play. Natalia with a knee to the head. Double elbow drop to Caitlyn there. Caitlyn, though, sweeping out the ankles of her. And Caitlyn invoking the power of her boyfriend Edge going for the pin, but Natalia does kick out. And now Caitlyn blocks a punch into a side headlock, and there's an elbow to the back of the head into a nice sliding drop kick, sending Natalia down, hitting her right in the knee, rolls her over. And we're going to see another member of the Iron Sheik Club, the Camel Clutch Applied. And Natalia is doing everything she can to crawl to the ropes here to get out of this clutch. And she touches the rope, but the ref doesn't see it. So instead, she gets up with a big backdrop. Sending Caitlyn down to the mat. And now a punch. And now they're in a collar and elbow tie up here in the center of the ring. Caitlyn comes out on top into a snap mare. And she's got a reverse chin lock applied. And Natalia again in a maneuver that she can't crawl away from unless she wants to break her own neck. She has to wrench out of the hold. 
with a head with an elbow to the back of Caitlin. Caitlin though reversing the punch, getting one of her own, twisting around and a club across the throat of Natalia. And now she lifts her up by the head, and there's another knee to the back. And now she's gonna pick her up by her hair. And she's got her set for what looks like a suplex. Oh, but Natalia gets out of it. And Caitlin with the spear out of nowhere. She's gonna drag her to the center of the ring here. We got a pin. One, two, three. Caitlin gets a huge win over the number one contender for the Divas Championship. She gets her second win in two weeks over Natalia. And despite the fact that Natalia has that title shot locked in at over the limit, Caitlin. Oh man, Caitlyn is on a roll. Two big wins over the number one contender. If Natalia can't beat AJ Lee at over the limit, Caitlyn will be your new number one contender. Mark my words. I know the way they book this federation like the back of my hand. Unbelievable win. AJ, yes, she interfered, but really didn't play a big role in the whole match. Natalia's anger just couldn't put the match away. She hit the wrong moves at the wrong time, and Caitlyn hit the right spear at the right time, pretty much knocking Natalia unconscious. And after the match, here is Caitlyn victorious. Guys, we will be right back. We're going to have our main event of the evening here in Chicago. Titus O'Neil taking on Razor Ramon since Ricky the Dragon Steamboat could not be here with us tonight after taking several beatings in a row from Razor. We're going to be right back for that, guys. Stay tuned. And Razor Ramon making his entrance, but Wade Steamboat is here, slams his head into the steel stairs, and rolls him into the ring. Oh, man. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, we were told, was not here tonight because of the beating that Razor Ramon has put on him over the past few weeks. But he is here. He does attack Razor Ramon from behind before this match gets going. And now Razor and Titus are both outside. Razor has him up for a vertical suplex down to the floor of the arena after Titus took apart that announcer's table. And Razor gets him one more time working from behind here. And there's a back suplex lifting one leg up. Titus O'Neil with the early advantage though after the attack from the Dragon. And now Razor snaps suplex through the announcer's table. There goes Titus O'Neil. And now Titus is working his way back into the ring. And Razor Ramon sensibly gets down off the turnbuckle. He was just waiting for him to come back in. Razor from behind. Titus reversing into a snapmare. Razor struggling to get up after that attack from the Dragon. But there's a big Titus O'Neil spine buster. No one saw that coming. And now Titus O'Neil going to drag him to the center of the ring. Titus going for the pin on a night of squash matches. Two, three. Titus O'Neil gets the huge win over Razor Ramon in record time. That is the worst match I will ever have broadcast on my channel. Titus O'Neil takes out the bad guy, Razor Ramon, with a lot of help from Ricky the Dragon Steamboat slamming his head into the steel stairs before this match. But nobody saw that coming. Titus O'Neil's tag team partner is the laughing stock of the WWE right now. And he goes on and he wins against Razor Ramon in the main event of SmackDown. Guys... Despite the bad booking in the short matches, if you like this video, please leave me a like. Leave it so hard I can feel it. If you're new here and you can't wait to see all the pay-per-views I have coming up, subscribe to my channel. They'll show up right in your inbox, your sub box, when they do go live. Thank you very much for watching, guys. We'll be back for IWC very, very soon. And no, no, no. We're still actually here. I always do that to myself. I forget that I'm supposed to show you your card for IWC, so the video is going to go on for just a few more moments here. These are your five matches for this Saturday's IWC. This is the night before your NXT Over the Limit pay-per-view. Here are the five. You've got Ophidian, the Cobra, the, 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 the master of the snake style, taking, taking on Ethan Carter, EC3 of TNA fame. Match number two, you've got a triple threat ladies match, and this one... This would be a lot of fun to see, aside from Rosa Mendez. But you've got Saturnine and Sarah Del Rey and Rosa Mendez in the same ring together in a triple threat. I, I'm amazed that that got booked. I think that would be a lot of fun. Your third match, representing the Devastation Corporation, you've got Max Smashmaster. He's going to be taking on Adrian Neville. They're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. That's a really big versus a really small guy. I don't want to see how that one plays out. I see Adrian Neville leaving a, a small human-sized crater in the ring. Get off my TV. 
Uh, your fourth match of the evening. We've seen this one quite a bit recently. Corey Graves taking on Jay Briscoe one-on-one. -on -one. And your main event, as you could have predicted, the way that WWE 2K14 books matches, IWC champion Cassius Ono will once again take on Sweeney Antoine. They will go one-on-one, -on -one, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, we'll probably see a title match on this card at some point. Hopefully, that's the one you vote for. But for now, these are your five. One more time, Ophidian, Ethan Carter, Saturine, Sarah Del Rey, Rosa Mendez, Max Smashmaster, Adrian Neville, Corey Graves, Jay Briscoe, Cassius Ono, Sweeney Antoine. Now, if you like this video, leave me a like. If you're new here, leave me a sub. Love me like I love you. I will see you guys for IWC. Take it easy.